This is David Dickey, and I would like to share with you a mixing index that helps solve industrial process problems. The idea of problem solution comes about as a result of understanding the type of common problems that exist. Inconsistent process results is probably the most common one, but there's also a need to improve or change an existing process. And oftentimes it involves the use of existing mixing equipment for multiple products with a single mixer or repurposing equipment for a different process. Purchase of new equipment is rarely an option for these types of problems. And there's always uncertainty about the capability of the existing equipment. Similarly, design and interpretation of pilot scale tests and results are rarely well understood. While CFD modeling offers some possibilities, it also has some limitations. CFD typically calculates velocity. However, industrial processes do not have specific velocity requirements. CFD raster or vector plots may not be scaled consistently such that red on one plot may not be the same as red on another one. And there is no quantitative method to convert CFD velocities or representations to a specific measure of mixing intensity. CFD results are often evaluated just by visual interpretation of raster plots, which can be subject to personal interpretation. Pilot scale results are also evaluated by visual observation or qualities and not necessarily by quantities. An alternate approach to mixer evaluation starts with a calculated value for mixing intensity and then observing CFD models and other process measures to get some kind of an idea of what those represent at the same conditions. A one to 10 scale of mixing intensity was introduced in an article by Hicks and Company in 1976. The intensity estimate was used to create tables for new mixer selections. The scale was based on a recirculating pumping capacity and that pumping capacity was used to predict an average cross-sectional liquid velocity. The mixing index follows some of the same kinds of ideas with the values from one to 10, but it can be calculated directly from mixer variables and takes on its own value of mixing intensity. A mixing index of one represents a minimal level of liquid motion. A mixing index of 10 is a maximum intensity typical of industrial applications. And the intensity values are not significant to more than one decimal place. The difference between a mixing index of 3.3 and 4.3 should be observable. The difference between a mixing index of 3.3 and 3.4 probably is not noticeable. The mixing index calculation starts with the turbulent power number, the rotational speed, the impeller diameter, and the liquid volume, all of which are necessary to establish characteristics associated with mixing intensity. Fluid viscosity effects are handled by a correction factor on the calculated mixing in index. The mixing index and customary engineering units is a coefficient of 4.05 times 10 to the minus fourth times the impeller power number to the one third times the rotational speed in revolutions per minute times the impeller diameter in inches to the five halves divided by the volume in, in gallons to the square root. The total quantity is multiplied by a correction factor for the viscosity effects when appropriate. The VIXIG index can calculate, be calculated in other units such as metric units and the only difference is the coefficient and the values are different because of the different units. This is a representation of what the mixing index is intended to provide. 
This shows one to 10 values for the mixing index and corresponding computational fluid dynamic representation of velocities at those conditions. Now this could have been done with changing rotational speed only, but because that becomes more extensive than is typically allowed in practical uh, industrial applications, I chose to increase the impeller diameters across the range to give both the effect of mixing intensity and the effect of uh, what you would be expected to see in a CFD plot. As you can see, there are differences in the CFD plots at the different intensities, but in many cases there are no striking differences and most of them are subtle and subject to some judgment and interpretation. The same range of mixing intensities can be represented for hydrofoil impellers using CFD plots. And the same type of thing for a radial flow straight blade turbine with a similar set of results. The mixing index has the benefits of a simple calculation to represent mixing intensity. It works with different impellers, it works for different liquid levels. It can estimate the effects of multiple propellers and can assist with scale. -up. Some of the limitations, while it only applies directly to liquid blending and will not accurately evaluate other mixed processes, liquid motion is a still a factor in other applications like solid suspension, heat transfer, or other processes, and the mixing in index can provide some indication of the intensity for those processes. Some additional calculations include for multiple propellers, the total mixing index is estimated by the square root of the sum of squares of the mixing index values for each impeller. Different impellers, the mixing index is a function of the turbulent power number to the one third power. That type of a behavior is also characteristic of what happens with pumping numbers relative to available pumping capacities. The viscosity effects uses a Reynolds number function reflecting how the pumping and velocity are reduced by viscosity. This pair of curves shows as a function of Reynolds number the type of corrections that are involved the upper curve represents, as it indicates, turbine impellers, which I take to mean impellers with power numbers equal to or greater than one. The lower curve is representative of what happens with hydrofoil impellers or impellers with power numbers less than or equal to one. As you notice, the power number effect does not, or the Reynolds number effect does not begin until you get out of the turbulent range and below a Reynolds number of about 20,000. Using the mixing index is also beneficial in helping to do uh, mixer design. By rearranging the calculation for mixing index, an impeller diameter can be calculated based on a desired mixing index and a rotational speed along with the volume and, and uh, uh, power number. The calculation can also be done for a mixer speed based on a mixing index and impeller diameter. This way, picking one or two variables can be able to find what the other one is fairly directly for uh, design. For scale up, the easiest way to look at it is in terms of something like geometrically similar scale up where all the linear dimensions are in the same ratio and all only remaining variables are rotational speed. Common scale up for geometric similarity to things like equal tip speed, equal power per volume, equal solid suspension, which is typically between tip speed and power per volume. Other scale up criteria are not, not usually practical. Well, this shows what happens if you did a geometrically similar scale up and created a CFD model for it. The small scale impeller diameter is four inches, the large scale impeller diameter is 32 inches, 
for an eight to one scale ratio on, based on linear dimensions to keep the tip speed constant small scale rotation speed must be reduced by that same factor of eight to come up with the large scale speed. What happens then is calculating a mixing index for the pilot scale comes up with 3.0. The mixing index for the large scale is also a 3.0 because the mixing index is related to the liquid velocities. If we do a scale up now to an equal power per volume scale up, we end up with a higher rotational speed than we did for the tip speed. And in fact, as a coincidence of the scale ratio, I happen to choose the rotational speed is now double what it was for the tip speed. And the power per volume mixing index scale up is 6.0 rather than 3.0 for the small scale. A solid suspension scale up that might fall between these two has a speed in between the uh, tip speed and the power per volume and a mixing index of 5.1, which is also in that range. Looking at some of the less practical scale up criteria, if we use an equal fruit number, which usually gives us a very aggressive scale up, which corresponds to a rotational speed in excess of power per volume, and a mixing index now of 8.3 for the large scale. On the other end of the scale, an equal Reynolds number gives us a ridiculously low rotational speed and a mixing index of 0.4 representing an ineffective process also represented by the CFD model for it. The other case I looked at here is an equal blend time scale up where the large scale speed needs to be the same as the small scale speed and the very, very high velocities that are represented in the CFD model also are interpreted as a mixing index of 24, which is larger than anything that's likely to be practical for an industrial application. For non-geometric scale up, I typically take a stepwise approach starting with first a geometrically similar scale up to the large from the small scale tank diameter to the large scale tank diameter. This doesn't necessarily get the right liquid level or volume, but that adjustment can be made once the initial uh, geometric scale up is done. Finally, once you have the large scale volume and, and scale up accomplished based on the small scale information, then other mixer features can be adjusted, such as number of impellers, type of impellers, and other things of that characteristic to get the desired design. The mixing index can be used for non-geometric scale-up to choose or compare the conditions at each step in the scale-up process. Finally, mixing index is a practical engineering solution to otherwise complicated mixing problems. At least a starting point provides a calculated option to evaluate mixing intensity. It gives a design estimate for either speed or diameter if the attempt is to create new equipment, or it can be used as a check for unreasonable conditions or changes. The mixing index provides a single numerical value when used with CFD velocity distributions. And most importantly, it's a practical way to help solve many industrial mixing process problems. And that's my story about the mixing index and how it can be used to solve mixing process problems. Thank you.